Join me in how to draw a color wheel spider web using radial symmetry. The materials you'll need are a pencil and eraser, a white piece of paper cut into a square, sharpie, colored pencils, scissors, and a ruler. We are going to talk about the elements of art, line, color, in particular our color wheel using some of our primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, as well as value, which is essentially how light or dark something is on the scale of white to black. It is widely considered to be one of the most important variables to the success of a piece of artwork. It helps create the illusion of form, making objects look more realistic. Another key concept in helping us create our spider webs is radial symmetry. It's a type of balance in which the part of an object or picture is arranged from a central point. Objects that have radial symmetry can be divided into equal pieces like a pie or a pizza. That's also called a congruent shape. Radial symmetry can be found all around you. There are examples in nature and also man-made objects. So think of flowers and snowflakes tires and ferris wheels. What else can you think of that has radial symmetry? Your eye can is I can draw a spider web using radial symmetry and the elements of our line, color, and value. The first thing we're going to need to do is to measure our paper so that we can cut it into a square. When we are thinking of symmetry, it needs to be equal on both sides, especially radial symmetry. So my paper is about 11 inches. It doesn't have to be perfect. And about eight and a half by the other side. So I'm going to flip my ruler around, measure at the eight and a half mark, make a little tick mark or line, to show where that is, do the same on the bottom. Once again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Then I'm going to draw that straight line down and grab my scissors and cut my paper along that line that I just drew. After it's cut, we are going to use our ruler to find the center of each side, which is approximately four and a quarter. So I'm just going to put little marks on each side of my paper to indicate um, where that measurement is. And I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to match up those little lines that I did with my pencil. I know it's hard to see, so I'm sorry. I'm going to start by drawing a vertical line down and then crisscross that with a horizontal line. In the center is what we call an intersecting line where those two lines meet and touch. Now I have four small squares. I'm now going to draw a diagonal through one side and once again I want to do my best to get my ruler to touch the center because like I said, all of those lines will look like they are radiating out of the middle of our paper when we begin our spider web. I'm going to do the same thing on my last remaining side. Voila, and we have created the beginning of our radial symmetry spider web. Now to continue creating our spider web, we need to create a series of repeating curved lines that go all around the um, straight lines and diagonal lines that we just did. So they are going to just create a pattern going all the way around. I like to use my pencil. If I make a mistake, I can erase it and fix it before I get too far. Now, once you create your first set of curve lines, you're going to repeat these lines all the way around. They're just going to get a little bigger 
as you work your way around your paper. I like to kind of turn and spin my paper as I work. Once we've finished our web, we're going to add our spider. So we are going to start by drawing a line down and a pretty big circle attached to that line. Now, once we've got his body, we're going to do his head, which is just another semicircle attached to that other circle. Then we need to give him maybe a couple little things. That's up to you. I'm going to begin his eight legs because he is a spider and needs eight legs. I'll start with a diagonal and do a little curved line going inwards and do the exact same thing on the other side. As I begin his next set of legs, I'll make them just a little longer than the first set. And then as I begin my way to his back or hind legs, I'm going to draw those diagonals going backwards and with a little curved line with the shortest leg being in the back. Now I need to do the exact same thing on the other side to make my spider symmetrical because they are equal on both the left and the right side. Once I have completed drawing my spider and spider web, I'm going to grab my black sharpie and once again go over those lines so they're nice and bold and visible. So take your time and trace all of those lines. Next, it's time to begin coloring or shading in our spider web using the color wheel as our inspiration. Now, two things to note the center of our spider web will be the darkest and the outside will get the lightest. Also, however, the outside edges of each section will be darker as we work our way to the middle, making it lighter, using essentially a light source coming from above and shining down on our spider web. Well done, my most amazing artist, creating these fun and festive spider webs using the color wheel and incorporating value to make them look a little bit more three dimensional. And if you had fun making art with me today, please consider subscribing.